I could pay $80,000 for this Escalade, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and finance it. What's up, family? Thank you for tuning in to the Dream Nation podcast. My name is Casanova. I'll be your host, and I'm excited to be bringing to you entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and trailblazers from around the world. Stay locked in with us because we're about to go on a journey that will change your life. What's up, guys? Casting over here. So today I wanted to talk to you guys about a conversation that I was having with a student after I got done speaking to his school. So he had asked me, if you're getting into real estate, what's the number one thing you got to make sure that you take care of? And I thought about it for quick, you know, just a second. And I was like, your credit. And so this is very important. I would say, obviously, at the younger age, but even at the older age, it's very important that you got your credit together, right? That's the number one thing that I would say it can hurt you or it can help you. Once your credit goes downhill, it's very hard for you to come back from that because most of the time, it takes about seven years for you to be able to recoup or rebuild or repair on your credit anyway. So I told him about credit and I said, do you know what credit is? And he was like, you know, it's the money that you get. And that's what I hear a lot of the time. I hear it's the money, it's the value. And I always like to tell people that when I think of credit, it starts with credibility. So let's talk about what is credibility. And that's where you can really find out what the definition of credit is. And for me, what I always tell those around me, whether it be clients, whether it be friends, whether it be family, I say credit is the trust and one's ability to make payments over time and make those payments on time. So when you think about credit, you got to think, okay, am I credible? To a bank, if you're going to a bank and you are looking to get a home loan, if you're looking to get a car loan, if you're just looking to get a personal loan, that bank's going to look at your whole report and they're going to say, how credible is this person? How credible is he or she, right? Can they make their payments over time and make them same payments on time? Or do I got to come looking for them? Are they going to be 45 days past due? Are they going to get it to me if they need to? You get a 30-day grace period in most situations, right? If you're talking about a mortgage after 15 days, then you're probably going to have a late payment on there. But that still won't be reported to your credit bureau until you're 30 days past due. That's when you start getting into trouble. So if you've already got bad credit, what's a couple of things that you can do to be able to build your credit right now back up what's some repair things that you can do because I remember when I first started out I was just finishing up at the University of Iowa and so I come back home for one summer this is actually my sophomore year so I was kind of finishing up my stint at the University of Iowa but this is at the end of my sophomore year so at the time Xboxes just came out they were super popular the games like Halo and this is the Xbox 360 so not the regular Xbox but there's things like Halo out there and then there's Gears of War. And so I remember my guys were all getting Xboxes and I had a little job that was paying me, I want to say like $11, $12 an hour. But I went to Walmart one night, I saw a little kiosk and they were saying that you could get an instant credit card. So I'm looking at it, I don't know too much, but I seen it was free money. So I'm like, okay, you know what? Let me go ahead and try it out. So at the time I didn't have no credit, so I didn't know if I was going to get approved or whatnot. But I knew, you know, I wanted this Xbox. I seen this kiosk and it's saying, hey, you know, come check me out. So I decide, uh, okay, I'm gonna put my information in there. Next thing I know, I get popped out like a $350 instant credit limit that I could use in the store. My, like, oh, made it, right? So then I go out and I go to get the Xbox. I get an Xbox, I get a game, I get two controllers, I get the Turtle Beaches. I wanna say at the time they had the little headphones, Turtle Beaches at the time, for anybody who knows what those were, but it was like an upgraded headphone. A set so I was like okay so I got all this stuff and it came out to be about like three hundred dollars right on the spot so I get these games in, in the Xbox and everything using this money and I go back home I tell my parents you know I just got this credit card and they like how much money you got left and I'm like I got about fifty dollars and being honest rather than telling me hey you better make sure you could pay that back right you better go make this money they was like hey you know like let me borrow a little bit on the car so I'm thinking okay we all gonna win then when the time came 30 days came and I needed to make that payment I had not budgeted because the next week I want to say or two weeks or whenever it was that I got that paycheck you know I'm a young kid at this time so I'm 19 20 years old I go out and I spend that money on the weekend I buy the clothes I buy the J's I, I buy what I need to and then when the time came for me to make that payment I didn't make that payment 
right? I'm going to be honest. I just didn't make that payment. So that was a dumb decision by me. What happened after it went 30 days, then it went 60 days, then it went 90 days, and they're adding interest on me, right? And now they're calling and blowing up my phone. I'm like, listen, I don't got it, guys. I don't got it. And my credits already went down. So I'm like, whatever. Well, what happened? That stayed with me for seven years. And that was a big, big problem because I just didn't know. And so that's why I'm bringing this video to you all because I understand you don't know what you don't know, right? So what are some ways that you can figure out how to start rebuilding your credit as of right now? There's credit collection services, not the people who call you, but credit repair companies. That if it's been so long, within the first two years is where it's going to impact your score the most. But after you start to get past that, then it starts to kind of fade away. It's still on your report, but it starts to not harm your score as much. So what can you do? You can go off and you can get a secure credit credit card. A secure credit card basically means that you're going to put up $200, $250. This is something that I did when I was first starting to rebuild my credit. I went and got a secure credit card. I put up $250 on it at Capital One. So basically, I'm borrowing against the money that I've already put up to show that what? I'm credible, right? I have credibility. That's what I'm doing. I'm establishing that rapport with the bank so other people can see it. They can see that I've been making these payments over time and making sure that I make those payments on time. So you have a secure credit card. What else can you do? You can go out and put a secure loan. If you are good with your money and managing it right now, put $1,000 up, put $500 up, go to the bank, say, I want to get a secure loan. Next thing you can do is you can reach out to one of the collectors and you can say, hey, I'm willing to make make this payment to you all if I can get it deleted from my report. Now that's a 50-50 chance on if they'll delete it or if they won't delete it, but that's still another way. There's websites out there. There's creditboards.com. There's Credit Warrior, which is a Facebook group. There's a lot of different sites that you can get out here and you can start to learn how to do it yourself if you don't want to pay a credit rebuilding company. But there's a lot of good credit rebuilding companies out there if you're looking for them as well. But just understand that first and foremost, if you have not, you know, had any derogatory marks on your credit, you got to understand that when you're able to leverage your credit, so many more doors are going to open up for you. So make sure that your credit is the most important thing. Now, if you have good credit, how can you sustain that credit? How can you keep building on it? The number one thing of what banks look for is they want to see your debt utilization. So what that means is if you got $100,000 in credit, where should you keep that? Or even let's keep it more simple, right? You got $1,000 in credit, right? Where do you want to keep that? You want to keep your utilization at $300 or lower. 30% is that number. If you can keep it less than 30%, more like 10%, you're A+. Plus. But 30%. So that means if you then go and let's say you've been making your payments over time for a couple years at Best Buy or wherever else that and they say, hey, you know what? We want to bump it up for you. We want to give you $10,000. What's your new credit limit? I want you to divide that by three. And now your new credit limit is $3,000. But again, if you could still keep it under $1,000, you're going to be better off because that's what banks are looking to see. Another thing that they're looking to see, they're looking to see the age factor of how, how long you've had credit. So what that means is, let's say, uh, and I'll give you guys a little bit of a trick. If you have a spouse, a uncle, a grandma, whoever that may be have great credit, you know that they're good with managing their money, ask them about being an authorized user on their account. You don't need a card. You don't need anything like that. You just want to be an authorized user. Because Now, there is a downside to that. The downside is if they miss a payment, if they go through anything, you could be messed up as well. But if you know that they've been doing it the right way, they own a lot of real estate, they own multiple businesses, you know, they're not over leveraging themselves. They pay cash for most things, but they do have a couple of things just to make sure their credit stays to where Because you have to utilize the credit as well. I remember when I was working for a car dealership, we had farmers living in the Midwest, we had a lot of farmers that would come in and they could pay cash for a truck. And uh, then all of a sudden they go to get a loan on it because they want to reap the discounts 
they want to reap the benefits of the discounts and, and things like that to be able to get more money off. That's where you see a lot of those incentives. But it comes with the financing, right? They want you to finance and you can pay it off within three months or so. But at least on the front end, if you want to be able to save, you're going to finance it. But then all of a sudden they say, you know what? I could pay $80,000 for this Escalade, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and finance it. And so the bank comes back and says, oh, we don't want to touch them. And it's like, what? I could pay cash for this. I understand. But we don't know how credible you are. We don't know how much credibility you have because you're not utilizing any credit. So being able to put your groceries each month on it, being able to put just your cell phone bill on it each month, you don't have to put a lot. You don't have to be over leveraged if that's not what you're comfortable with. But you do have to show that you're credible and you can establish credibility with the bank, right? Because again, if we remember what credit is, it's the ability to make payments over time and on time, and how well do I trust that? So that's my tip for you guys today. If you enjoyed it, please go ahead, do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe, share, let me know your feedback. As always, I'm gonna be bringing you guys the top tips, everything that I learned, because I just wanna give value. So remember, in the dream we trust, we are gonna talk soon, people. Casting over. Hey guys, thank you for sticking with me and watching this video. Now, if you've gotten any value out of this video, I want you to do me a favor. I need you to make sure that you hit that subscribe button and also turn on those bell notifications. What that's gonna do is it's gonna tell you whenever I drop more heat just like this video. And make sure that you hit that like button because that's gonna let the YouTube gods know that more people need to be seeing this video. I appreciate you watching and as a token of my appreciation, I dropped a couple couple more videos for you to take a look at in the meantime until I drop more heat. Remember, in the dream we trust, but you got to take action. Otherwise, that dream that you have will only merely be a fantasy. I'll catch you on the next one.